Yeah, yeah. Stand on the scout. If he does try to get up, I'll control the head. Yeah. You control this arm, Eddie. I do not want to lift the crane too high. The tendency, it will swing. Borneo. Nature's ultimate treasure trove. Where new species are discovered every month. But this is no tranquil paradise. From the highest peaks to the lowest waves, battles are waged daily. It's still got the detonator in it, right? Men and women risk their lives fighting for this unique world. Forging a better future. This is Frontier Borneo. The ancient jungles of Borneo. Home to one of the most charismatic and critically endangered animals on this planet. The orangutan. These creatures may become extinct within 10 years. Logging and forest burning have destroyed huge swathes of their home and many are hurt in the process. Just outside Kuching in Sarawak, the Matang Wildlife Center has become a sanctuary for orangutans that have been found injured or orphaned. Many are brought here as babies and keepers spend years caring for them. After 26 years of operations, Matang is now preparing for its latest orangutan release. Senior keeper Apai Sandy takes orangutan Semangan and his four friends out for their final session of jungle school. Semangan was rescued as a baby from poachers. Sandy has made it his life's work to teach this ape the vital skills he'll need to survive in the forest. Tomorrow, Simangang, along with the four other orangutans, will return to the wild. But Borneo's wilderness could turn their lives upside down. These youngsters have grown up dependent on human care and attention. Center manager Siali Anaban has to ensure the orangutans are ready. So during this release, we must see that they really can uh, look for food in the jungle. They must be able to forage. And these orangutans have to learn to be cautious. There might be some illegal hunters around, there might be poachers, and those are the things that we need to control so that these orangutans are safe. And that's where our rangers play a big role. To give the animals the best chance to adapt, the release process is gradual. This morning, Siali and his team build a temporary feeding platform. It is a familiarization uh, stage whereby sometimes we need to bring in sub supplementary food for the orangutans because in case there are not enough food in the forest. Ready, Fra? Boleh testing? Test, huh? In the future, hopefully the feeding platform will not be used. It might last for six months in, or in a year. We want them to be very free in the wild. Being back in the wild has its challenges, but it's worth the effort. The jungle is the orangutan's true home. Off the coast of Sarawak, 
an oasis of marine biodiversity. But this habitat is under threat. Deep sea fishing trawlers have destroyed coral reefs, wiping out the marine life in this area. An operation is underway to give these waters a new lease of life. Christopher Cree and the team from the Sarawak Forestry Corporation are on a mission that could undo years of reef damage. For Chris, today is the culmination of 18 years of planning and hard work. His mission? To plant 500 giant reef balls at the bottom of the ocean. So reef ball is very effective for, for conservation. Besides reef building, home for fishes and other marine life, they protect the shoreline from uh, illegal trawling. Positioning the concrete balls accurately is a complex endeavor. I do not want to lift the crane too high. In the tendency, it will swing. Each ball weighs about a ton. Dropping one could damage the ship, or worse, injure the crew. Uh, boy, boy, Mira. Because of the wind and the condition of the oceans, we may slow a little bit. Before the balls can be dropped, boys need to be placed to mark out the correct areas. OK, uh, diver boat, diver boat. We're going to move to the first buoy. We're going to move to the first buoy. Over. Ranger Toloi Kerapin speeds ahead. It's up to his team to mark out the perimeter where the reef balls will be dropped. Okay. Drop anchor, drop anchor. We're going to deploy four buoys with distance about 100 to 150 meters each. If poorly positioned, the reef balls could damage healthy seabed. So we're going to move to the next side to deploy the next uh, buoy. Toloi needs to work fast. The longer they take, the less time Chris's team will have for deployment. Ah, uh, uh, Boy, okay, okay, okay. Good. The marker boys are in place, and the captain positions the barge. OK, run. It's a dangerous orchestration. Uh, on the starboard, or? Chris will need to conduct the crane while keeping a watchful eye on his crew. It's critical his men fasten the hook securely onto this reef ball. It's the only mechanism that keeps the ball from crashing down. But the choppy seas are making the crane sway violently. A crew member has a lucky escape. The crane is at its most dangerous now, over a ton of concrete swaying in the wind. If you pit not right, that's a pun. Luckily, no crew were near. But it's a setback. The work can't proceed till this wreck is cleared. With only six hours left till sundown, the team has to hurry. Kuching City, Sarawak, in northwest Borneo. Animal handler Shamil from the Sarawak Forestry Corporation responds to an urgent call from a resident in the central district. It's a python, one of the largest snake species in the world. This python has had a lucky escape. Despite being a protected species, these animals are seen as a lucrative prize in Asia. 
but they can be dangerous and have been known to attack humans. For everyone's safety, it needs to be released away from the city. Here, near a reserve at the end of a highway, Shamel thinks it will find its way back into the wild. Yeah, get full. Go on the show. Which way you go? I think it's hungry. Unfortunately, the python is heading in the wrong direction, back towards the road. I think he tried to find the foot. Sure, that's not it. A hungry, stressed python is on its way back to the city. And finding it in the tall grasses won't be easy. Borneo, home to one of the world's oldest rainforests and 150 species of snakes. One in particular is struggling to find its way back into the wild. I think it's hungry. Animal handler Shamil has just released a python, but he fears it is heading back to the residential area. I don't want this snake go to rot. But the python is now perfectly camouflaged. And pythons are ambush predators. Shamil knows this snake is so hungry, it may attempt to strike at them oh. again. Finally, the snake is secured. This time, it's taken much further from the road. But Shamil wants to make sure the snake is heading for the forest. Success. Yes, better already go already. Job done. Both the python and the residents of Kuching are a little safer tonight. Okay. Eight kilometers out at sea, Chris Cree from the Sarawak Forestry Corporation is feeling the pressure as they try to deploy 500 reef balls onto the seabed. <laughs> One ball has already been destroyed. With only a few hours of daylight left and nearly 200 reef balls still to be deployed, the team can't afford any more delays. On the support boat, Toloi is worried. The waves are causing a treacherous pendulum effect, turning the concrete structures into potential wrecking balls. Each reef ball has to be lowered very slowly onto the seabed. Another fail. This time the ball was released too early. Sometimes when it's choppy, when you want a ball, when you center the ball, and it just hit by the wave, and the spring goes. So it's too dangerous to be near there. The team don't waste time over the lost ball. successful deployment. For Chris, every reef ball in the ocean means another step towards change. I started from the beginning of the project. 
and it was we faced a lot of hard time to do the job. You know, try to make things good, try to make a lot of things perfect. Today, we find that what effort that we put in is a success. It will take a long time for new reefs to grow, but this is a key step in bringing back life to these waters. Sarawak, northwest of Borneo, at the Matang Wildlife Center. The team have a very special day ahead. It's heavy as well, huh? Yeah. I'm sure you've been feeding. Are you ready again? <laughs> they are preparing for an orangutan release. Good. Leo Biddle, director of the orangutan project, is giving Semangan his final health check. Okay. Now he's not fully asleep. Mm. Okay, Semangan. After eight years of care, this orangutan and four of his friends are being released back into the wild today. Okay. Right? Ready? So we just need a good couple of still shots of the teeth in a minute. Yeah. When he was uh, rescued, he was only about two weeks old. And unfortunately, he had three shotgun pellets inside of him. I took one out, but the other two were too hard to uh, get to. So uh, uh, we decided that because he was so small, only two weeks old, uh, not to do invasive surgery, we weren't actually sure that he would survive. Leo believes Simangang is finally fit for release. <laughs> but not all the orangutans seem so keen on freedom. <laughs> Ali knows something is up, and he isn't impressed. The vet needs to sedate him quickly. If the orangutan gets stressed, the release of adrenaline will counteract the effect of the drugs. It's a miss. Ali's having none of it. Leo steps in. It's okay, it's just a needle. It's just a needle. And he tries a more open approach. Ali, Ali, Ali. What are you doing? Ali? Come on, bud. Come on. Come on. Just a needle. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. The long-standing yeah. bond with Leo soon pays off. Yeah. Oh. I'm sorry, buddy. Yes, in your lips, Finally, Ali is ready to go. Leo and the team act fast. Semi-conscious, Ali could wake up at any moment. If he does try to get up, I'll control the head. Yeah. You control this arm, Eddie. Okay, Don't right. yeah, this yeah. Arm. Yeah. An adult orangutan is an immensely powerful animal. And Ali has bitten handlers before when he felt threatened. You could see around the table, we were a bit more cautious, and we brought in a few more people so that if he did start to try and bite the vet or uh, uh, get off the table, we could have just physically run and carried him into the enclosure. <laughs> I don't want to put my hands near his teeth. <laughs> OK, you're going to have to come in and do it very quickly. Yeah. That's good. Ali is given a clean bill of health. Hopefully, that's the last they see of the enclosures and actually the center. The, the intention is for them to live semi-wild in the forest for the next part of their rehabilitation. Time for the release. After eight years of rehabilitation, these four orangutans head back to the forest where they belong. It's been a huge effort from their team of faithful keepers. 
Dahlah saya nang suka terus dan hidup dalam hutan. Ketimbang bapaknya dulu lah. Nah, nyamai. Tuh rumah baru, pokok baru semua baru, rumah baru. It's a bittersweet goodbye for senior keeper Sandy. Ada agak sedih sikit lah kalau dia tidak balik. Karena saya macam anak lah. Saya dari kecil saya bawa dia. Without the comforts of the center, the road to independence will not be easy. The greatest challenge now lies ahead. Life back in the wild. Off the coast of Sarawak. Gear up, guys. Having completed their mission successfully, Chris and his team gear up for an inspection dive. They're here to check on some reef balls they deployed a couple of years ago. When Ranger Toloi first came here, this area was totally barren. It's like a, a desert. There's nothing there but sand. Our intention was to create an oasis for the reefs. Once there's reef, there's fish. Remarkably, the area has already been transformed. Life is thriving here. The corals are growing very, very happily, very, very healthy. There's no bleaching on the coral settlement itself. When you see a lot of those growth on the reef ball, you cannot help but smile. For Chris, decades of conservation efforts are finally paying off. But a lot of parents, when the first baby deliver, their tears drop. And that's the same thing happening to us, especially me. Huh? <laughs> a lot of people doesn't see it today, but what you do now is for your, the future generations. What you keep now is for, for the future, not for you.